Mike Tyson is the youngest boxer ever to win a heavyweight title and is often called the most ferocious boxer in history. He went from growing up in a rough neighborhood and being raised by a single mom who died when he was 16 and getting arrested 38 times by the time he was only 13 years old to becoming one of the greatest boxers in history. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, top I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like nine to the nine. For my top 10, top 10, top 10, nine to the nine. This one's for my top 10. Hey, it's Evan Carl Michael, and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more, and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Mike Tyson, and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, master your craft. See, fighting's an art, and everything's an art in fighting. Intimidation's an art. Everything's an art. Psychological wolf, everything's an art. You know what I mean? It's almost like acting. It's almost um, how good an actor do you want to become? Or how far are you willing to become to become the best? Rule number two, pursue greatness. I had did a robbery of my friend's sister. I told him, I think to come to the courtroom with the teacher. You know, she's a criminal, she's a thief too, but she came and told on me. Right. You know, and um, I went to a spa for the um, a reformatory for kids in the Bronx. I was getting in trouble. I think I stabbed somebody there when I, so it shipped me to another place that was really horrible. Is that Trigon? Yeah. When I went there, I got in trouble and they sent me to the, the lockup dorm where you can't go outside where they bring the food to. It's just really crazy stuff. I'm just a kid, you know, it's like... Yeah, see, that's what I wanted to ask you. Are you afraid? I mean, what's going on with my life? What kind of life is this? No, because when I go in that place, everybody from Brownsville are in these places, so it's like I'm at a family reunion or... <laughs> Reunion, uh, you know, the, the 20 year reunion of school. This is, hey, what's up, y'all, my man? Yo, you better, you better give him what he wants. They're telling these guys and guys and all these guys get together. And really, the worst thing that ever happened to me, I got sent to the college where they lock you up. You can't come out to call the clothes. And it was this Irish guy in there named Bobby Stewart. And this guy would take all the guys over there, and they're coming back on them from the other side with like broken noses and crack rip and they did punch in the eye. And, but they're happy. So I'm looking, I said, what's up with these guys? What's up? We're boxing Mr. Stewart over there today. And so I said, I looked at Mr. Stewart, I said, I can kick Mr. Stewart ass. So I'm looking at this guy, and so, <laughs> no, this is really serious stuff. I go in there and stuff, and he's arrogant about Mr. Stewart too, right? He has no, so I'm just wailing away, I'm wailing, 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 wailing. I don't know anything about fight, but I'm just strong, wailing, wailing. And it hit me in the stomach, and um, anything I must have ate for two weeks came up. <laughs> And after he did, I said, sir, can you teach me how to do that? I never thought about it, but I wanted to knock out some people in the street so I could steal their money. All right, so if you want to learn, you just do your room, clean your room, and um, do good in school. But I, I did all that stuff. Man, I didn't know how to spell cat, but I was getting like, my little honor rolls in this juvenile center, right? And he starts teaching me this stuff, right? I turned into this model thug guy. I'm talking real nice, like, yes, sir, no, ma'am, I'm really like this. Um, Thomas Black kid. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. Yes. Yeah. And um, this is a person that wants to improve himself. He didn't like his life. He wants to improve it. And so um, I understand that now. I didn't understand that back then. So anyway, I went over there and he told me that we could take you. I don't want you to go back to Brooklyn because you're going to get killed or you're going to go to prison. And I'm saying, yeah, most likely, yeah. So um, <laughs> he took me to meet Cuz. And so when I met him, Cuz said, do you want to be a not? I'm told you, do you want to be heavyweight champion? Well, I'll make you the youngest heavyweight champion in the world. So I think this guy's a pervert. So, you know, coming through that, <laughs> no, coming from the streets, no, coming through the streets and being a young kid, I didn't know. I said, no, but this guy, he said, you could be great and you could help your friends and your friend, but I didn't get it and I didn't know what great was. I was just a young, ignorant cat. I didn't know. I didn't know. He said, do you know what that means to be great? No, nah, no, no, sir. And he said, um, it's like, just doing the most difficult thing in the world, but do it with the simplest of ease. And I said, wow, did y'all hear what I said? I said, okay. I'm like, there it's okay. And I, I believed him, I started working. Rule number three, establish who you are. What do you think are some of the, the biggest lessons you learned about who you were, 
20 years ago compared to who you are now? Oh, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it's hard to accept who you are. You know, sometimes I see young kids out here and um, they commit suicide and they don't like who they are and they're in prison. And it's, it's really difficult, you know, to accept who you are in this world because really we don't know. But then in order to have friendship, you have to be put in this particular kind of, I don't know, you have to be labeled, so to speak, you know? So we don't know who we are right. until we get, I guess, to a certain degree of evolution. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you you knew who you were when you were 20, 25? I had no idea. Yeah, I mean, you were the world champ at 20. I had no idea what was going on outside of that. Know what the world was really about and we had to really, um, be a kind, hold yourself accountable. Yeah. I had no, I had no idea what that was all about. You had, in another world. Did you feel like you held yourself accountable to anything except for your training and, and, and dominating in the sport? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I just hold myself accountable for. Yeah. Yeah. When did you feel like you started to realize who you were? Um. When I got married for a third time, my wife Kiki, we really had to. What can I kind of establish by saying we had to really make a choice what we wanted to do in our life right there. We were, we were really, we were really at um, a really bad no-win situation and we had to establish um, some kind of foundation for our life. So, so that's really when I had to see what I was made out of. Rule number four, choose your battles. Do you still believe today that you should never back down from a fight? I don't know, I believe we should choose our battles. Okay. You know, because I realize in life, and I know people probably um, not like what I'm going to say, I found out this in life, you know, sometimes we got to fight, you know. Even people that never had a street fight before, even a wimpy guy, sometimes we have to fight. Even if we know we're going to lose, we still have to fight. I don't know why. I, why can't you just say, hey, listen, you won, I don't want to do this. Right. But even though we got to lose, we know we're going to get the shit kicked out of us, <laughs> but we got to fight this guy like we're going to kick his ass like we're a bully. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I never understood that whole dynamics of life. But it's absolutely you know, but it's, that's the way it is. Also, if you want to have more confidence, check out my 254 series where every day for the next 254 days, I'll send you an amazing unlisted video for free to your email. The link to sign up is in the description below. Closer I get to the ring, I'm more confident. Once I'm in the ring, I'm a god. No one could beat me. A good fight is just to be diligent and committed and disciplined, doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. Rule number five, learn from life experiences. How do you learn to overcome the triggers today still from the triggers of your past? I think I read that you were in, you know, got arrested 30 something yeah, well, times before you were a teenager. Yeah. Um, so it seemed like everything triggered you then, right? But from that perspective, everything changes when my classes change. You know, I never understood um, my struggle. You know, I, I had everything I wanted, but still I was, I was fighting the light. Mm. My dark spirit was still fighting the light. That was my struggle. You couldn't, I couldn't get anything done, you know? You were winning everything, you were on the top of the world, but what was the big struggle internally for you during those highest moments where everyone wanted to, uh, you know? Well, it didn't, it didn't appear real because at that time I lost my mentor. Everybody was dying. And um, because when I, when I met them when they were pretty old and I was very young. Yeah. Everybody started dying, and I didn't understand that. I started thinking, nah, duh, they were old when they met you. They were 57, or close to 60 when they met you, Mike. So, of course, they were going right. to die eventually. Yeah. When you become a man, these guys are going to die. And um, I don't know, I couldn't deal with that for a minute. And then the world just came in on me, and it's just, it just was overwhelming. I just had to learn from life experiences. Yeah. What how was to conduct myself? Yeah. Rule number six: Learn to love yourself. But are you surprised that your image in the public eye has been so rehabilitated? You do get a lot of love now. Well, man. I just had to. Um, I had to try to love myself. You know, that's what it really comes down to. I had to deal with that challenge and um, starting to love myself um, realer and deeper. And for me, it's different perspectives, not from love to say how great I am, how grand I am, but to really look at um, the uh, under um, baseline, bottom line um, characteristics of who I am. And by doing that, you know, um, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna require a whole bunch of struggle, a whole bunch of thinking, a whole bunch of reflecting, and, and let's not forget and mention a whole bunch of therapy, you know. But um, 
that's just the kind, that's just um, it's just the unlingering feeling of unfreedom sometimes, and that feeling is such a um, essential part of my identity than anything else. Rule number seven: Overcome adversity. How would you describe your neighborhood? It's really um, drug infested, um, violence infested, um, crime infested. Just um, a big cesspool most of the time. When did you want to be a fighter? I never thought about being a fighter till I was in um, I was in a detention school, and um, a gentleman by the name of Bobby Stewart would box with the kids if they behaved well and got on the level, and they could blow up some steam. And then he started showing me how to box. I never had a pair of boxing gloves on in my life. I'm probably 12, 13. I never had a pair of boxing gloves on in my life, and. Um, he said, you can do this. If you, since I started training with him, and then he took me to custom model, and he said, if you could change your life, and, and not have to go back to your end. Rule number eight, pursue happiness. If your 20-year-old or 25-year-old self was sitting right here where I'm at, and you could sit down and have a conversation with him, what would you want to say to him? You know, he should prepare on um, developing what makes him happy in life. And strive on, um, Developing that and cultivating that what makes you happy. And have that strong alliance within yourself on what makes you happy and never break that. Because that's, that's all of our really treat. We can get a hundred million dollars a year business. What is happening? I don't mean ha 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 hoo 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 ha ha ha. He's funny. What is the essence of happening? What does that mean? Everybody has a different definition. When we got seven billion people, I'm sure it's seven billion different definitions. Some people may have dark happiness. They like mm -hmm. to do dark stuff and that makes them happy. But it's still happy. So what makes necessarily happy a good thing? Mm -hmm. What makes you happy? Simple stuff. And I don't know if that's happy. I take it for granted sometimes like everyone else is my kid and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I have to, you know, not worried about going to prison. Not worried about paying my bills and having my lights on and my lights being cut off or my water being cut off yet. Yeah. It's being stable in my life. Yeah. So you would tell him to, to start pursuing happiness more? You know, that's the word I would use, you know, but that's the only thing that's going to stimulate us. Yeah. You know, with drugs. I don't know if it's happiness, we call it happiness. Sure. Why is it the word happiness that makes us think this is something that we should, you know, mean, listen to? Yeah. Why happiness? Because it, we look at the good. yeah, we look at the response of happiness, what it looks yeah. like. Yeah. And we should always um, ascend to happiness. Rule number nine: care about your mental health. This is one of my causes that I'm going to eventually is mental illness. Do you know how many people are in prison that that need to be in a mental hospital? They need to be in a hospital, and um, that's not getting any really any kind of interesting play or uh, foresight because um, we're walking around with people who are, yes, um, they're functioning people, they can hold jobs, they can hold family, but every now and then they get sick and they do things that are just not acceptable in society. So they need to, um, they need to um, and this is another problem, they, di they misdiagnose these people, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm one of these people. I've been in and out of psych wards for a bunch of years, right? This is a 10-year thing, I've been, because that's what drugs lead you to, it leads you to um, prison, psych wards, and death. You know, and I was on the verge of going to the last one. But praise be to God. But anyway, um, it's just a, it's just a struggle, and uh, it's going to take a nation to help. What you know? what would you say your final diagnosis is? What what do you think Mike Tyson's your mental issue is? If you know, and, and not to say that in a dramatic way, a lot of people have mental issues. I take I personally take Lexapro. I'm I'm, I'm generally I, I, took, I took that too. That's a, ooh, yeah. smooth. It's smooth. Yeah. I don't need that I'm much. Not heavy smooth, no. but it's smooth. I'm, 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 I'm not like boom. You know? No, I'm just ten milligrams. I just need no, a little no, bit man. to keep it. What do you do? You a what do you take now? And B was the one thing. I don't take thing? anything now. No, no medication. Now. Nothing at all. Um, thank God I went through a change in my living style, my eating process. I had great support from my wife, Lakia. Oh, she's just a, um, man, she's just a paramount in my life. And um, I get mad at her, and I'm just mad that she dug me out the gut and cleaned me up. You know, I'm mad that I didn't do it myself. And sometimes I, I battle with her because of that. And um, I just, um, I owe a great deal of, of my blossoming to a, a functional human being in society to her. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is have fun. This is Mike Tyson, and we're on unboxing. And at the moment, we're gonna buy, unbox strawberry shortcake. This is very difficult to unbox because 
as you know, they have strong, strong adhesive tape around here. And so, since I don't have no box cutter, I must do it very violently, but in a good mood. I'm a pessimistic pessimist. Oh, wow. We have all these wires here that'll be very difficult to get her out the box. But I'm gonna try to do this as scientifically as possible. Oh, this is this beautiful. Please forgive me, shortcake. She reminds me of a, a dancer in Vegas named Desire. Okay. So I accidentally ripped a little bit of her hair out. And as I comb her hair, it begins to look better. And nice. And pretty. And cute. I really like strawberry shortcake. And so I like to say, this is I Am Mike Tyson on Unboxing Boxes. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, if you're still here watching, I wanna celebrate you. If you commit to taking action after watching this video, we don't just watch videos, we do something about it. Give me a hashtag believe down in the comments as well. All right, the man who had the biggest impact on your life was God bless his soul, God's the matter. Yeah. And now, do you feel Mike Tyson needs a cause to guide him through business, this type of business? Hey, listen, we're going to work this out. It's the same way, you know, in having a mentor, and having someone that means much in your life, you know, it comes a time when you have to separate. And you have to, um, wow, you have to see all the teachings, how they're going to work. Yeah. If you want to see the top 10 I did on Anthony Joshua, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. There's some things that I can't get over, and I'll always be scared of. But I take the positive from it. Like, I'm never so confident I'm going to win.